All right, we do all the way rise and give honor to the Most High Yah. His Son, Yeshua, the true Messiah, always to all of y'all divine preachers in every place, preaching, teaching, living, y'all's divine word. Always to beloved ministers that labor in this part of vineyard, whom I'm not ashamed to call brethren. Could dish greetings to them their prospective places. Always to those that are watching by way of live internet, to the dispersed, to the scattered, to the Jews first, and also to the Gentiles. Could dish greetings to them their prospective places. As we ought to say last and never least, to the way of Yah Synagogue. Amen. Proper honor to you all in your prospective places. Amen. Once again, from TV, internet, radio, wherever our voice can be heard, wherever we can be seen. Before we came on, had nothing come on. When we go off, absolutely. Nothing Ain't nothing else. nothing else coming on. Right. If they're not teaching Kodesh, living a clean, sanctified life, the people ain't in nothing, and they hadn't heard nothing. Wow, this is an attempt to collect the debt. To collect the debt. Whatever you hypocrite, false pretend, backbite, mumble, and grumble against will be used in that collection of a debt. These messages are always being recorded for quality assurance to make sure no side deals get cut with nobody. But everybody got to come in, Brother Red. Out of the door. Straight, narrow path. All right, at the 12th chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 9. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 9. Wonderful Savior. Amen. Uh, listen to the book. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he what? still taught the people knowledge. He still taught the people knowledge. Listen. Yea, he gave good heed yeah. uh -huh. and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Tell them what happened. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright. Even what? Words of truth. Even words of truth. Point for us to sit down and consider this. Pick me up, if you would, at the... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> Matter of fact, make it 15 and 1. Salvation is the plan for us. Amen. At the end of the day, what well, the plan is to get salvation. It's inside of the plan. That's the conclusion of the plan for us, that we might receive salvation. Peter told us receiving the end of our faith, even the what, brethren? salvation of our soul. That's the completion of what we're doing, which means we have to sit down and plan and have to strategize. In order to do that, we take the book. We go back to look through the book to see exactly what does it take for a man or woman to be saved. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 at verse 1. Listen to the book. Moreover, brethren, <coughs> Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Did not say scripture. The gospel which I preached unto you. Which also ye have received. Which also ye have received. And wherein ye stand. Yeah. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Sometimes, you know, it's amazing. He said, where in you stand? Sometimes, in the event of doing things, you have to be propped up. You know that? Sometimes, in order to stand, it takes some other help. Even we look back and look at Moses, it's come to mind, we see him read him. When Israel was fighting the battle, what happened when Moses' arm dropped? And when Moses' arm, Moses' arm dropped, he, then he got tired? And when his arms dropped, they started to lose the battle. But when his arms stayed up, Israel wound up winning. So we see the importance of why he was on the cross, he had to be nailed up. Why his hands had to be nailed and be peeled up. Why his arm was up, we got the victory. Had his arms gone down, we'd been in trouble. He was working all the signs we talked about before, even as Moses did in Egypt. When he had to do it, he kept telling him to stretch forth his hands. And he was working all his signs and his wonders by Moses. Now we find he did the same thing by the Lord Jesus. Now he started talking about where in you stand. Something come to mind. See if that's um, First King. <clears throat> Let me see what 21 and 1 say. For whatever reason. First King chapter 21 and verse 1. Listen to the book. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel. See if it's 22 and 1. First King 22 and 1. <clears throat> Listen. 
and they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. Who is that, brother? Who is it talking about? <laughs> Come on. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead is ours. Yeah. And we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. Yeah. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. Talk down and give me about the 21st verse. <clears throat> Listen. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Come on. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth. We all know part of this story. Well, we should know the we should know the other part of filling the gap of this story. This is when the king of Israel and the king of Judah were going to fight against the king of Syria. He wanted to go and he wanted to inquire the prophet. That was Jehoshaphat asked him. When he inquired of the prophet, all the prophet told him to go up and prosper. Then Jehoshaphat asked, well, there's not another prophet among them they can inquire. And he let them know there was one more. But he said, but I hate him. Because <clears throat> he never prophesied good concerning me. What was that prophet name, brother? Micaiah. Micaiah never prophesied good concerning him. And when he went and he asked Micaiah, should he go up or should he forbear? Micaiah told him to do what? Told him to go up. And he asked him again, how many times I got to ask you till you tell me nothing but the truth? So he let him know exactly what happened. And he was letting him know how, what he had seen and what the Lord had showed him. That there was some spirit that had came before the Lord. Listen. I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. When the Lord wanted to know how is he going to prevail and cause the king of Israel to still go up, he said, I'm going to be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Come on. And he said, thou shalt persuade him. God said, you, will, you shall persuade him. And prevail. Also. Come on. Go forth and do so. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all <coughs> these thy prophets. Yes. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Mm-hmm. But Zedekiah, the son of Shananah, went near and smote Micaiah in, on the cheek. And what did he want to know? And said, which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? Where do we get this simulation from? You're sure. When they blindfolded him, they started to strike him. They wanted to ask him. They said, prophets, I tell us who hit you. And the Bible said, what else did they do? It said many other blasphemous things that they do. Which would tie them in. They wanted to know exactly which way it went when they slapped him. Listen. And Micaiah said, behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Yes. And the king of Israel said, take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city. Yes. And to Joash, the king's son. Come on. And say, thus said the king, put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction. Yes. Until I come in peace. Mm -hmm. And Micaiah said. We heard I that before. Hmm. We've heard that before. What, what happened? That's right. Where are we running at? Isaiah what? <laughs> See if it's 29, 30. Listen to the book. It said Isaiah 29. Is it Isaiah 29 and 30? No, no 30. 29 and 20? Amen. Is it 30 20? 30 and 20? Isaiah 30 and 20. Amen. Listen. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. I got too much, too much reverb. And though the Lord give you the bread of what? Adversity. And the what? Water of affliction. Yet. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more. What happened? But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And what happened? And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Do what? Walk ye in it. Come on back to what you got in First King. First King chapter 22. What verse you left off at? Continuing at verse 28. <clears throat> at verse 28. Listen. And Micaiah said, if thou return at all in peace. He let him know if he return at all in peace. The Lord has not spoken by me. The Lord has not spoken by me. 
Come on. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. Yeah. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle. He said, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle. But put thou on thy robes. Yeah. And the king of Israel disguised himself and, and went into the battle. Yes. But the king of Syria commanded his thirty and two captains that had ruled over his chariots, saying, Fight neither with the, with small nor great. Yeah. Save only the king of Israel. He told him, Don't fight with the small or the great, only with the king of Israel. Come on. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat. Yeah. That they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. Surely it is the king of Israel. Come on. And they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. And what happened? And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel. Yeah. That they turned back from pursuing him. Yeah. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture. Yeah. And smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. You know what's amazing about that? Jesus came down and disguised himself. Just like man. The Bible said, much then that the children were what now? Partakers of flesh and blood. He himself also took part of the same. So the king of Israel had disguised, had disguised himself. That meant he looked just like the regular people. That's right. It's important for you to know this. But there had already been a decree not to fight with anybody else. Even when it came down to the Lord Jesus, when they got him, he said, if it's me, you see what he told him to do with the other. Let them go. That was a sign given. He looked just like them. That's why the Bible teaches in the book of Matthew now said that he that betrayed him had given him a sign. That whomsoever I kiss, that's him. It didn't matter what he did. It was already foretold to him. He knew when he came. It didn't matter what he put on. He was still wind up dying. This man took off all his royal apparel and he still wound up dying. This man came down the skies himself just like every one of us and he still wound up getting killed. There were some people that came along that looked like him, that they wanted to kill, but that wasn't him. Come on. Wherefore, he said unto the driver of his chariot, turn thine hand and carry me out of the host. What did he just tell him to do? Turn around and take me out of the battle. Come on, son. For I am wounded. He was wounded. What, who told us about that? Isaiah. Why are you getting better over him? The book said he was wounded for our what? For our transgression. Y'all need to know this. He told to turn aside and take me out of the battle. I'm wounded. Come on. And the battle increased that day. And the battle increased that day. And the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians. That's why we got over him. Paul told you over, brother, the gospel which I preach unto you. Let's see what he said. First Corinthians again, chapter 15 and verse 1. Listen. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Yeah. Which also ye have received. And listen, what else happened? And wherein ye stand. He had to stand him up. He had to stand on it. That what kept you sure standing. Even with him, he had to be nailed up in order to keep him up for a reason. Now, this gospel that we teach to every one of you, it ought, it ought to make you be able to stand. We talked about when they came and he spoke to them, they received the word. He had them to stand upon their feet. The word caused a man or woman to stand. But I find y'all sometimes, most of the average of y'all, be honest with y'all, y'all just the jelly and wheat bag I ever seen in my life. The gospel ought to make a man out of you. It ought to make you stand. I'm saying, I ought to make better women out of you. This, God, this man came down here with confidence because of the word. This man already knew he can't, it don't matter what disguise he put on, he knew it was just a matter of time he was going to wind up dying. Y'all go into the battle with this, with this dumb expectation. When you find him, the similitude of the king of Israel going into battle, it's the same similitude we found with the Lord Jesus. He already knew what was going to happen when he went into the battle. But he went anyway. The Bible told him in the 59th chapter of the book of Isaiah, 57th chapter, he told her, said he went on forwardly anyway. After hearing and know it was going to come to his demise, he still went into the battle. Just when he used the lion spirit to get the king ill, he told him to go and you're going to prevail. He's going to wind up going for it. Just like you're sure. He went on forwardly anyway. We talked about several times in the seventh chapter of the book of Proverbs. And that met him what, brethren? With a woman. With the attire of a harlot. She allowed her feet. Now she was out. Outside of the gate. She, and with an impertinent face, she kissed him. 
And she took this man on. And he was led just like an ox to the what? Until what happened? And strike through his liver. He went on anyway. He knew it was wrong. He already knew what was going to happen. All these things we find, these scenarios that come up, came up to show us exactly what he did. That's why he let you know, didn't nobody take my life. I laid it down. Amen. I got authority to lay it down. I got authority to pick it up. Y'all have absolutely no idea what this man went through just so he could save us. This man to come along and parallel himself right along with what everybody else did just so he can come and fulfill saving and making us the sons of God. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Hold on, finish that what you got in um, right quick in 1 Kings chapter 22. That's a conclusion to the matter. 1 Kings chapter 20, where you at? Verse 34? 35. 35. And hold me at 1 Corinthians 15. Listen to the book. And the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians. Y'all hear that? The king was propped up in his chariot after he was wounded. Tell me that who that reminds us of. After they went through and pierced him through it, he was still sitting up there. He was still made to stay up. Listen. And died at even. Wow. Let's see what happened. Here. See that... Uh, St. John chapter 1. You remember about verse, uh, let me see what verse 43 say. Y'all all right today? Amen. That's amazing, huh? You find that story, when you really look at all you look at is a disobedient man that was dumb enough to still go do something that he was told not to do. Because he was paralleling somebody. He was a shout to somebody to come, not of somebody being dumb, but somebody willing to do it. Amen. Listen to the book. The day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find a Philip and saith unto him, follow me. Listen. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him. Yeah. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. So you hear that? We don't find who Moses and the prophets and the scripture did write. Tell me, son. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Listen. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Come on. Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. And what did he want to know? Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? And when did he tell him he knew him? Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Listen. Nathanael answered and saith unto him. What did he tell him? Rabbi, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. So what's going to happen to the king of Israel? He going to wind up dying in the battle. He just declared he was the king of Israel. Declaring that we just heard what happened to the king of Israel. Huh? When he was told about his hour would come, he said, what should I do? Should I pray? He said, Father, save me? He said, for this cause came out into the world. Pick me up that's what he said in St. John chapter 12. See, this is where we really mess ourselves up. We talked about before what the word should do. When it comes down to it, when the Bible tells us, but let a man examine himself. Now, physically, if you think in the natural, you're going to make a fool out of yourself. Because if you examine yourself, you won't find a doctor that'll do their own examination. Because you're going to tend to overlook things and going to say it's not what it is. You tend to be a little prejudiced when it's you versus when it's somebody else. Any little thing, you'll say, we want to check it. It could be something. When it was you, you say, it might not be nothing. I'll just watch it, monitor it, and see if it's something else, if it arises, if it gets worse later. So you tend to be a little prejudiced with yourself, and you don't tend to be somewhat, and you tend to be somewhat biased. That makes sense? But when he tell us to examine ourselves, only way we can do that, we got to use the word. When the word come, the word come across for everybody in here to see yourself. The word don't strike up things in your mind and put things in your heart without any cause or recourse or recourse. It comes up for a reason. Amen. That word come in because it come to separate you from yourself. Separate the soul of soul, separate a son of soul and spirit. He's trying to separate that natural man from the spiritual man. There's got to be a separation. In the average you got, you still attached. 
That's why y'all don't make any change. That's why y'all coming with the same attitude, the same behavior every time. And Ezekiel already prophesies about you. What does Ezekiel say y'all do? You do what? Come before me as thy people. They hear, my, they hear their words, but they, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it because you're still in the natural. And it's important for you to realize what was done and what's your expectations. A lot of times people fail on the job. They don't just bring you a job and don't train you and give you any idea of what they want you to do. They let you know on a real job. Some of these little dumb jobs, they just let you loose because you really don't matter anyway. Now you do going to hurt or benefit. They come a real job, they're going to sit you down and train you. And they're going to let you know what your expectations are. We are expecting this from you. We will need you to perform this. We need you to be here at this hour, this time, and these many days a week. Expectations are given to you. A lot of people, y'all come and look to be saved, you look behind. You don't even know what your expectations are. The reason why a lot of people wind up falling and going away, because they look at, I didn't know I was required to do all of that. Most people walk out of the job, they don't even sit there and give them handbooks, never know rules and codes and ethics of the company. Then they come back and get you, nobody never do it. It was in the book, you should have read it. That's why you got people like human resources, people that's supposed to be trained, they're supposed to know the company guidelines. They're supposed to know the do's and the do nots on the jobs. They're supposed to know what things come in and fringe upon which, what things require a write-up, suspension, or termination. And y'all come in here, this is why you come to see a teacher. Because certain things you're doing, you think God doesn't look at it that way. And the whole time, a lot of stuff you're doing never required no right or Everything you've been doing required death. Termination for you. Cut off. Done with. Cast in the hell. You need to know that. What's your expectations? You got expectation for God. You're looking for God to save you. For what? Save you from what? What you asking God to save you from, you won't let go. You still, how are you going to save you while you yet still in it? Doesn't make any sense, does it? That's why we're here. Listen. Mm -hmm. St. John chapter 12. And jump down about verse 21. Amen. Listen, make it verse 22. Come on. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come. That time is come. That the Son of Man should be glorified. That the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you. How will the Son of Man glorify? Through his death. Through his death. Look at how we get our glory. When we get accolades. When we get raises. When we get all these kind of things. Look at how we get our glorification. He looked at the Son and him. The glory of the Son for him was to die. That's what it was written to him to do. When Simeon prophesied to his brother and father, he said this man was set forth for the what? Fall and for the rise. He looked at that's, he looked at that's how I'm going to get the glory. I'm going to have to go into the ground. He said for the rising and the fall didn't make sense. He was already up. He said for the fall and for the rising. The sun already up. So now he looked at my glorification going to come in through this. This is where I'm going to get the glory at. This is the best thing that can happen to a son of man. We sit here and we don't consider that. Listen. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Truly, truly, I say unto you. Except the corn of wheat. Rise fall, up. Fall into the ground and die. What happened, son? It abideth alone. But what happened? But if it dies. What happened, son? It bringeth forth much fruit. That's why he said that when he looked at his glory at. The glory of a seed is for it to fall into the ground and die. Because we're going to look at what it's going to produce after. People, how many of us want God to get the glory out of what we do? Then die. He said, except it, do it. What's the glory? What good is a seed if it don't die? Who walk around, look at these seeds. If they yet still alive, they don't do anything. They're no good. Except they fall into the ground and die. He said, the time coming that I'm going to be glorified. I'm looking at what I'm going to produce after. Y'all don't look at that. You're looking at what you're going to do now. And the most of you, the longer you stay here, the more trouble you're going to get into. Listen. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If, Come on. if any man serve me, let him follow me. Y'all hear that? If any man serve me, let him do what? Follow me. How you going to follow Jesus if you still down here? 
Peter said we had to follow his steps. So when are we gonna get when are we gonna start following and get to the point of dying? If any man do what now? If any man serve me, what are he gonna do? Let him follow me. Come on. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. How am I get that from still here when the Bible teaches in 1 Corinthians 15, chapter, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God? Let's just be practical. Let's just be practical. You people are not actually serious about being saved. This is not actually something y'all have actually put in your mind and thought about having. To be like Jesus? To be where Jesus is at? Wow. Hold you got Luke chapter 9. Verse 21. Lord, we'll come back to what you got in the 12th chapter. Y'all don't need to sleep. Y'all need to be awake. You're going to have plenty of time to sleep where you're going. To the grave. Because there's no knowledge or strength in the grave where you're going. Y'all going to have plenty of time to rest. Let you get a little rest before you burn in hell. Because they're going to take all your strength out of you. That takes a lot out of a person to go to hell. So you're going to need to rest before you get there. Listen. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. Come on. Saying, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes. Mm -hmm. And be slain and be raised. And be raised. The third day. The third day. Come on. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's what we mess up at. That's what we mess up at. If you're going to follow that man, you've got to look at persecution, affliction, and being rejected. How y'all get so stuck in little stuff, get y'all from wives and husbands, relationships and jobs, and you just can't see any recovery and get yourself together, yet you follow Jesus? Did y'all ask, you, how many times, did, who, who in here, this is the first time you heard that man say that? If any man going to come after him, let him deny himself. The stuff that you would doubt is stuff you want and stuff you got yourself entangled with. And you're supposed to be fighting a warfare. And you ain't supposed to entangle yourself with the affairs of the world. It's certain things in the world just not good for us. You know what we start doing? Sister Belinda got it, so I want it. Brother Lancaster got it once, so I want it. What you got and what you got might not work for me. A lot of people in here, what they want, it ain't for you, though. This is where we mess up. The average of us, the stuff we got and the stuff that got us away from God is stuff we started basing what other people have. It's not for you. If it's for you, the devil in hell couldn't keep it away from you. It's not for you. You can't judge what's for you according to what nobody. What Roy got don't fit me. What I got don't fit Roy. You can look and say, why I don't have that? The journey and what I set you up to do, it don't fit you. Jesus came down here and said, Fox had a whole birds have net, but the son of man had what? Nowhere to do what? Who went and got Jesus about it when he died? Who? Joseph. Or who? Was he broke? Man was rich. What did Paul tell all that were rich? That they do what? What else? Willing to communicate. And what else? Ready to distribute. Ready to distribute. Riches can fit some people among us. It don't fit everybody. It, everything don't fit everybody. And where y'all mess up at, y'all start looking at what somebody else got, and you start thinking, why you can't have it? You go in the same place they're going. You in the same work they have. Why you can't get it? And you want to get yourself in a minute hurt. He told you, they that'll be rich, you want to fall in a lot of hurt for loss. He said, you find yourself in a whole lot of trouble. A lot of stuff y'all get yourselves entangled with. Y'all ain't paying attention to what this man told you to do. You got to take up your, I can't take up Leon and Cross. What he got a battle, what he got to deal, what he got a battle ain't the same battle I got. Nor is my battle the same battle he got. Everybody in him battling something different. Everybody in him has a different thing that's a love or a pet peeve that they're holding on to. And God, when the word comes, the word comes to everybody in him individually. We're here as a conglomerate group, but individually, you know what the word is saying to you. You say on the skull, you say, that, that was for me. Somebody said, it was a good one. Somebody said, no. That was for me. Because the word come and reach us and let us know, I know where you at. The word know where everybody at. You can fake the phone, change the look, do whatever it is you do. That word come. The word know where you at now. You know where you at. You hear the word. You were sitting and putting in your mind. That's the man talking. Sure it's the man. But it's hitting your particular area and hitting your situation. That's the man talking, nigga. That's the spirit talking. 
The spirit come to hit her because he's going to try us on things that we do to let us know he's got to break everything in us to get us the way he wants to be. That's why he let you know when he come to a sea. If that sea is beholden to any, any part of life, you know what they're going to do? That seed ain't going to die. It ain't going to produce nothing. And that's what he tried to show. That seed had to completely and wholly give itself up. That's what the son did. Wholly, completely gave himself out. Sold out. Bought, controlled by God on every aspect. We sit around we fight God's control. We fight it. This man came here was subject to every law, every aspect of the word. This is what he told us in Galatians 4 and 1. Hold you, now I got two things y'all holding, ain't it? I still want to finish that ninth chapter of the book of Luke. Amen. I still want that 12th chapter of the book of St. John. This is Galatians 4 and 1. Some kind of way we'll work all this in. Some kind of way. For those of y'all that sleep it, go ahead and sleep. Because when you get to hell, you're going to need to keep yourself up so you can keep fighting the flames. Come on. Now I say that the air. What is the air? Huh? Somebody come in possession of something. As long as he is a child. Different what? Nothing from a servant. That's why he was son of man. He kept using said the son of man, son of man. Because he didn't differ from a servant. Who you think you the son of? You think you the son of God? You the son of a man. You daughters of a man. This tell you the same thing. He disguised himself just like the, the king of Israel knew the best thing to do was to try to put on something that he couldn't identify me. Put on regular clothes just like the rest of the world that went into battle. But he was still picked out. He was still sought. Listen. Though he be Lord of all. Though he be Lord. So when the king of Israel changed his clothes, did that change him from being the king of Israel? So when he came down in flesh and blood, did that take away any of his authority? Not at all. Listen. But it's under tutors. Under and tutors? Under, that's why he would have went into the temple, as his custom was. That's why he's been sitting down talking to the doctors and the Lord. They were tutors. They were teachers. The book teacher let him that is what in the word? Communicate with who? In what? That's why he would have been sitting there asking them questions. And answering questions. Because he was taught in the word. Listen. Until the time appointed of the father. Until the time appointed of the father. What happened son? Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Listen. But when the fullness of the time was come. What happened son? God sent forth his son. Made what? Of a woman. Made. Under the law. To do what? Redeem them that were under the law. It was a purpose why he came. Listen. That we might receive the adoption of sons. Now we start to look at what had to happen. Coming down as a man, he was still subject to these same laws and tutelage. He was still subject to these same principal things that we have to do. When he healed ten lepers, when one came back, what he told the night, the one that came back? Go show yourself to the who? And offer what? What's according to the law. When it made sense for him to heal him and just tell him to go on off. He was on the tutor. He was on the governors. When it made sense. He was still up under Moses' rule. What he was going to do? Amen. He had to do the same. He had to tell him what did Moses say. Listen, when it came down, they even asked him concerning marriage. Is it lawful to put away for a man to put away a wife for what now? Every cause. Every what? Cause. What were they doing? Tempting they him. were testing him. What did he tell them? He asked them, what did Moses command you? He would have never overrode Moses. First of all, what did Moses command you? He would have sent them back to the law. What did Moses command you? And Moses commanded them that a man can only put away his wife for what? Fornication. If he had come and taken her and found that she had already been with a man. That's what he told them. What did Moses command you? What else was he going to tell them? The only people that he told anything different was that he told the apostles. Let's see what he told me in Mark 10 and 1. It's important for y'all to know this. Because he was son of man too now. Son of man was under tutelage, under governors, under rule. Huh? Amen. I don't think they're conscious. 
There's a lot of people reading the book. Y'all don't really take this book of no real caliber. Yeah, y'all don't really think nothing about this book. This is the 10th chapter of the book of Mark at verse 1. Listen. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea yeah. by the farther side of Jordan. Mm -hmm. And the people resorted unto him again. And as he was wont, he taught them again. Y'all hear that? Just like he wanted, he taught them again. What happened, son? And the Pharisees came to him and asked him. What did they ask him, son? Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. Tempting him. Come on. And he answered and said unto them. What did he tell them? What did Moses command? Well, let me just go ahead and tell you flower the bat what you need to be doing. What did he say? What did Moses command This is what you? I'm going to tell you you need to do. What did Moses command you? I say to him, as long as he was a child, he differed not from a servant. He's on the rules, on the tutelage, just like the rest of us, until the time appointed of the father. Come on, son. And they said... Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement. And do what? To put her away. They didn't tell him everything. They just told him part of it. They want to see what he know. Come on. And Jesus answered and said unto them. What did he told them? For the hardness of your heart. He did what? Wrote you this precept. But from the what now? Beginning of the creation. It was what? God made them male and female. Listen. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. And do what? Cleave to his wife. Listen. And they twain shall be one flesh. Therefore... So then they are no more twain. But what? One flesh. So what did he told them? What therefore God hath joined together. Let not who? Man put asunder. And what happened, son? And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. Yeah. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. He didn't talk about no fornication. He had told him exactly what happened. Moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yeah, he gave good heed. Sought out and said in order many proverbs. He won't know what did Moses command you. Pick me up and see what he told in the 19th chapter, 1910. It's important for us to know this. This is why a lot of Hebrew Israelite brethren we had, they make a mess out of themselves. Luke. Matthew chapter 19. Okay. Make it 19 and about 9. Wonderful Savior. Amen. Listen to the book. 19 and 9? Yes. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife. Back me up, back me up and make it what, 19, 5, 19, 4? Listen. And he answered and said unto them, have ye not read that he which made them. Well, you got to come up a little higher. What I want, 19, 1? Amen. Come on. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond, beyond Jordan. Come on. And great multitudes followed him, and he, healed, and he healed them there. Yeah. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? See this? Now they want to know for, every, for any reason. Come on. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read? That he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. Yeah. And he said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother. Yeah. And shall cleave to his wife. Come on. And they twain shall be one flesh. Yeah. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Yeah. What therefore God hath joined together. Let not what? Man put asunder. What does happen? They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement? Listen. And to put her away. Yeah. And he says unto them. Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. Yeah. But from the beginning, it was not so. Listen. And I say unto you. I say unto you. Whosoever shall put away his wife. Except. It be for fornication. Do what? And shall marry another. Do what? Committed adultery. Why did he tell him that? That was Moses' law. He was under tutelage. He was under rule. He couldn't come along and go against what Moses' law said. That's why he asked them first thing, what did Moses command you? But he let them know in the same thing, if you went back and paid attention in the beginning, Adam was stuck with his wife. Adam didn't put away his wife. He told him from the beginning it was not so. But Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, he gave you this temporary way to get out of your marriage. You were supposed to kill him. That saved us. That saved us. Yep. 
Because if we had actually done the law and Moses hadn't put that temporary state or, uh, or execution, we would have died. That's right. We would have died. We were unclean people before he got us. He told us in the 16th chapter of the book, he's thinking when I passed by and I saw you. You were laying in your blood. You were laying in uncleanness when I got you. But I said, Leo, most of the temporary stay or execution saved us. Now when the Lord come back in, the stay going to be poor. The execution going to stand. You going to hell if you don't get it right. What was he going to do while he was there? Come against what Moses said? He just let him know. That's what Moses told you. And that was the only reason he gave you that you could put away and get another one. But I'm letting you know from the beginning it wasn't purpose for you to do that. From the beginning, it was supposed to be one husband and one wife. That got that. But because of your heart, he allowed you to get away with it. That saved us. That temporary state, it saved us. But now you're in trouble. Now you're in trouble. Now that state gone. Once he left the scene, that's why he got in the house. He had the trying to figure out, what in the world? I'm confused. He let him, who said put away a wife and get another one? They commit adultery. Ain't no fun occasion for it. You commit adultery. That's why he let you know when the fullness of time will come, God sent forth his son, made it one, made under the what? To do what? To redeem them. That was under the law. How did he redeem us? First Peter. First Peter 1.18. That's right. We need to know how you redeem. This is 1 Peter chapter 1 at verse 18. Make it 17. Listen to the book. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. Listen. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed. So he was redeeming them that were under the law. For as much as ye know you were not redeemed with what now? Corruptible things. Like what? Silver and gold. From your what? vain conversation. Was he talking about our speech? What was he talking about? Our behavior. Conversation got a behavior. Listen. Received by tradition from your fathers. So why would he tell about received by the tradition of our fathers? Because what? Because the, the nickel of the father have fallen down upon the children. How do we receive it? How do we receive it? How do we receive the behavior? Huh? Well, pass down. Huh? Well, let's see what happened. At first Corinthians, I told him to hold for me, 15, 21. This all will come to an important for some of you. For some of you, nothing will make any sense. You hold what you got at first Peter chapter 1, verse 18. I still got that St. John chapter 12, too, and about verse 23. Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. Hold them for me. If I could only remember this stuff. Listen to the book. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Make it about verse 21. Listen to the book. For since by man came death. Since by who now? Man came death. What happened, son? By man came also the resurrection of the dead. Is man plural? No. Man is what? Singular. So he would call the son of who? Which is going to tie him back to Adam. Every man going to tie back to Adam. That's your father. So you start looking how death reigned. From Adam all the way to Moses. Even to those that hadn't even sinned after the same similitude. Death reigned from Adam from the first man and you got to go with Moses. Because the law run all the way up to Christ came. Death reigned. So now he done told you that you received this behavior from your fathers. It's got the father eating sour grape. Who teeth sat on the edge? He said, you received it from your fathers. Ezekiel saying, came in right, it's coming right back. How did you wind up getting in this position? Peter just came along and just told you. The father eating sour grape and said, your teeth set on the edge. He said, you got it from your fathers. Come on, son. Finish up first, Peter. 
For as in Adam all die. For as in who? Adam all die. What happened? Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. All shall be made alive. Come on back to what you got in First Peter. First Peter 1 Peter 1.18. We're talking about redeeming them under the law. So what did Christ do? He came and took us from under that. No more adultery. No more lying. No more cursing. No more covetous. No more Sabbath day. No more idols. That we redeemed us from, didn't it? What did he redeem us from? Curse. From the what? He got us from the curse of the law. Moses put a curse attached to the law. Moses told her clearly, behold, I set before you blessing and cursing, life and death. Choose life and live, both ye and your who. So when our father didn't when do it, who else was going to wind up being partake of the, of the curse? The children. That's why he told you, received of your fathers. They didn't obey and it fell on us. We don't obey, it's going to fall on y'all. It fell on them. That way he, he, told, he said, the reproach of them that reproach thee fell well. Why would he use that? Because of the law. I visited Nicola the father upon the, until the first, third and what? You start catching Jesus' genealogy. When did he come? Fourth generation. Forty-two generation they get you down to. Came in the fourth generation. So he had, that even had to tie into him getting the child. How was we going to put that on him? How was that going to be put on him if he came in the fifth generation? He visited to the fourth generation. All that paid, we had to pay attention to this. Let me tell you something. Y'all ain't no more saved, got y'all mind on being saved than a done caddy or trying to be a done boy dagger. Do y'all understand how important it is we have to know this stuff? Why does man come back to Canada and let us know that man came through 40 some generations? Because that's where he said, I visited Nicola the fathers upon the children. I by no means clearly guilty. We were guilty. He wound up having to bear it himself. This got to make sense. This is why y'all actually have no servitude. This is why y'all have no conscience. This is why you don't consider what y'all doing. Y'all do the most brain dead stuff I've ever seen in my life. I'm just being honest with you. Y'all do the most brain dead stuff I've ever seen. Y'all don't look at all this stuff this man do just so he can bear the transgression. To take away the reproach. To get away the offense. An offense was made. Somebody had to bear it and get rid of it. Listen. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. What is tradition? Some passed down? Listen. But with the precious blood of Christ. Yeah. As of a lamb. Without As of a who? Lamb. As of a who? Lamb. That was what? Without blemish and without spot. What is it saying? Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So when he came down and he was crucified on the cross, when was he actually killed? Huh? He had already been killed. He just had to come down and show it to you. Can you imagine that? He had already done it. The Bible said he was already four day. It was just shown to you in the last time. That man had already been slain. When we pick him up in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, when John sat here and he saw what he saw, you think that just happened then? That had already happened. He seen a lamb as it had been slain. He hadn't just been slain then. All the angels just waited to then that John saw the seed and they draw he was worthy. He had redeemed him. He had to have been redeemed them. All right. It's not important for you to know. All this had to be done. They had to come down just to show all this to us. Just so we could see it. For all that he was already purposed for this. This wasn't nothing new. At St. John chapter 12. We left off at what? 12.23? Y'all give me a little time. It's the Lord's Sabbath. 
I wish we would honor it right and stop being hypocrites. Quit being some done seven-day events and early Sunday morning worshipers. You need to know what you're here for. You need to get the spirit. You haven't got it yet. This is not as we need about God. Everybody telling us something about God, but we need to know what does it actually say about God. This is the 12th chapter of the book of St. John at verse 23. Listen. And Jesus answered them saying that I was come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Listen. Glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Truly, truly, I say unto you. Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It does what? Abideth alone. But? If it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Listen. He that loveth his life shall lose it. Come on. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Listen. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Y'all hear that? You're going to serve him, you're going to need to follow me now. Everybody claim they're serving God, but why you ain't following him? Why y'all ain't following him? Listen. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. Where is he at now? In the heavens. Listen. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. You think God honoring you and you ain't serving him? Because if you're serving him, you ought to be following him. You think God honoring you? Listen. Now is my soul troubled. Listen. And what shall I say? Do what? Father, save me from this hour. But what did he say? But for this, but for this cause... Came I unto this hour. Then what happened? Father, glorify thy name. He looked at God going to get the glory. He let you know he was in the flesh. I'm deeply troubled. I'm worried about dying. I'm concerned about what's going to happen to me. But I wouldn't dare ask God to stop it. How many times I told a lot of y'all, y'all prayed y'all way out of the situation? All he had to do was pray. You think the father wouldn't have heard him, he would have asked him. All they had to do was ask the father. You don't think the father would have heard him? But he'd been disobedient. He wouldn't have been willing. A lot of us sitting here, you just disobedient. Y'all stay in a situation, y'all know it wrong, but you're praying and asking God to fix it. That make a lot of sense. I know they're wrong. I know what's going on my house wrong. I know my kid ain't got no business doing this stuff, but I'm just praying about it. I know it's wrong and I'm praying about it. How much sense that make? Sit down with some beer and pray about drinking beer. I know it's wrong, Lord. Lord, Lord, I know this is wrong. Lord, save me. You so you saying no wrong, you still doing it? So you think I hear you. Because the eyes of the Lord are over to who? His ears are open to who? But the face of the Lord is against who? Do you not know this man had to be set up and set here and this man had to have God to turn his back on him? had to turn his back on this man for us. That's how bad the offense is. We sit here, we don't even consider it. How bad the offense is, and the sad part is, y'all still saying you still committed. Sabbath day, feast days, regular days, whatever it is, y'all don't even consider how bad it is. We're in a pretty bad situation. We're in pretty bad shape. The sad part, y'all can come in, y'all can sleep, and y'all can daze off and want to do other stuff you're doing. It's really sad. At the ninth chapter of the book of Luke. Give me that 923 again. Amen. Listen to the book. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. And take up his cross daily and follow me. Mm. Come on. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Get it back. A lot of us in here are guilty of saving ourselves. We're saving our marriages. Even though you know good and well they got you compromising. You know, good and well, they got you doing stuff contrary to what God tell you to do. We're saving our kids. They got us going contrary and following and worshiping them. We got ourselves in jobs and other situations. We know God are going contrary to God's word. And you don't even hear God saying, you're going to wind up losing it. You're going to wind up losing it. I watch a lot of folk put a lot of effort in stuff. It ain't going to be to your good. It ain't going to be to your fall. The worst thing you do is start throwing money inside a hole. A bottomless hole, you'll never get it back. You just got to know when you got to just walk away from stuff. Even Kenny Rogers told you that when it come down to gambling. 
You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away. You got to know when to run. Y'all some dumb gamblers. You gambling on going to hell. And you something you don't realize, I'm sitting in something that is totally contrary to what this man has told me to do. I'm sitting watching my kids do the utter destruction to themselves of what God told me for them not to do. And why in the world am I sitting around and I'm comfortable with this? Because if I can at least keep it together, just hold it together till the Lord come and make it right. How the Lord going to come and make it right when the word was supposed to do that? That's the purpose of the word. When the word is preached to us and we hear what the word say, we're supposed to act upon it. Wherever it leads me in a relationship with you, that's fine. I got to act upon it. If God got to come here and literally pick me up and move me and get me to do it, then he really don't need me. When the word commands and speaks to us folk, that's how we take our cadence. That's how we walk. That's how we move. Y'all say here, y'all move off of, let me wait, let me get understand, let me see what God going to do. If you want to see the real effect of God, do what God say do. Then you'll see the effect of God. What a lot of y'all in here going to wind up seeing, you're going to wind up seeing God work and send you to hell. That's what y'all going to wind up seeing God do. Put you straight in the hell because y'all cannot seem to conform yourself or formulate in your mind. You got to comply with God's word. Don't sit around and try to play like y'all dumb and you let no understanding when God's word tell you to do something. When God's word tell you to do something, that's why you got to get understanding. Don't try to play like I need some, re- I need some more understanding. If I can see, I- you playing the nigger spirit and the nigger spirit going to have you right in hell. People know what they're doing. Y'all know what y'all doing. Let me tell you something. This thing is critical. And this thing is winding up on us. This man talking about following him. This man talking about the glory of the sun. And the glory of the sun came in when the sun died. He let you even know about natural things farming. It's got to fall on the ground. It's got to die. And that's what's got to happen for us to actually become the literal sons of God. You got to die to this stuff. Y'all can't give up this little stuff you got. Y'all lie. Y'all covet us. Y'all cheaters, y'all backbiters, you hater haters and despisers of one another. Y'all going to hell. I ain't even talking about out there. I'm talking in this room. I know what my people are doing. Y'all sitting here, y'all are real dangerous. Y'all don't even consider, y'all going to hell. This man said, you follow me. Why y'all ain't following? Y'all got your groups and clicks that's going to click y'all right on the hell somewhere. Y'all are dangerous. Y'all are dangerous minded people. In your mind, your stuff makes sense. And y'all are arguing with me when I tell you something. I ain't never seen so many dumb people in my life. If I tell you, this is what don't make sense. I tell my wife that. I tell her something, she says something back. I said, tell you something. If I tell you something, that's what it is. Now, if I'm telling you something that ain't what it is, that means I'm lying. Why would you follow me and I'm your pastor and I'm lying? That means I gotta be a blind guy if I tell you something. And you're going to sit here and say, that ain't what it is. And you're going to sit here and you're going to keep going your way. One of us is off. If I'm telling you something, and I'm supposed to be your shepherd, I'm supposed to be your seal, where there's no vision, the people perish. And you sit around trying to argue to fight your way through it and see another way. Who do you think the destruction at? Who do you think the one compromising? Who do you think the one blind, me or you? I said, how many times I tell you, that youth is about told me to sleep. How many of y'all think I'm stupid? Well, of course you ain't going to raise your hand, but some of y'all do. You're just going to raise your hand. If I look you and tell you you will sleep, do I look like the type of person that just be telling lies? Do I look like my eyesight is just bad? I just glimmer and get stuff off? Or I look and I see your eyes closed and I see you sleep? Why would you sit and tell me you want not sleep? That means I'm lying. You got a blunt... I couldn't, I said, Eric, sleep. You said, look at me, Eric, you sleep. Are you sleep, Eric? Are you sleep right now? That means I'm lying. I'm blind. Why would you be following me? You said, I'm looking at that man, he said, I'm sleep. This man blind. He probably off on the word as well. He can't see me. Not these stupid niggas in here. Oh, I don't sleep. Y'all sit up there. Do y'all not see these people's eyes out here closed? Yes, sir. Andre, do y'all not see these people in their IB clothes up here? Do y'all see it, Brandon? Amen. Have you seen these people out here in their IB clothes? And you would have told me, you know what they're 
Hey, chill, I ain't sleep. I ain't talking about me. Sure I ain't. I'm looking at y'all. That's the sad part. I ain't the only one. This man watching y'all. Now you think that man got somebody sitting on you telling lies? Man so blind, he looking at you telling, I ain't sleep. I don't know what he's talking about. Not me. Now these niggas extra open their eyes. Some of these niggas' eyes finna flip and they finna cover their hair. Don't try to extra wake up now. Do what you've been doing. But I'm trying to tell y'all something. I'm watching for your soul. Amen. It ain't nothing to let you sleep. Y'all soul on the line. All of our souls on the line. We waiting to meet this man. We got to cover all this stuff by the end of semester. Amen. You don't get it. Ain't going to be no. We cramming now. Exams coming judgment day. What you ain't covered. What you ain't got. You going to hell. Nobody else ain't told you that. Everybody told you good people as long as you try. Mm-hmm. Y'all come late, ready to leave early. I can't get it for the life of me. Just bad spirit. I ain't seen y'all do stuff to me. I just, I just can't see how I plan to get the server late. How I just, how I got to work on, how I get in my mind, I got to start working on getting on time to serve God. I can't have no job. Because there's very few jobs going to let me show up late, ain't it? I say I'm serving God, I'm working for God. How did I get some self of God, I'm going to be late? It's in my heart to be early. Round 12, so my boy tell you, I'm telling let's go, let's get on it. They don't start at 1.30. By the time they say, hey, we got to go, I get them up at 10 something. I don't want no delay. I don't want nothing holding me back. I don't want to even get started with working on getting on time. How do I work on that? Something in my heart ought to drive me to want to be here. Amen. Even the Bible said the love of Christ constraineth us. This man look at when you actually learn what this man did and what he went through for us, you say, Wow, for me? Why wouldn't I do for a person that'll do that for me? Amen. Why wouldn't I try to be a virtual one? Why wouldn't I try to excel them all? Amen. Even the Jews of Bira were more noble, they were more fair minded than those in Thessalonica. Because they received the word with all and somebody, and they searched the scriptures when? Daily. Whether those things were so. Y'all have no idea how this man went and allowed the law to be infraction on him and be charged with the law just so you could be saved. Hmm? Just for us. Just for us. This man had to wind up being guilty. Being found guilty of the law to be put to death just so we could be saved. Who did not say it now? Neither would God found in his mouth. It's really amazing. It's really amazing. Paul told us he judged something. They just judged. That it one did what? Then were all. What did Paul tell us that? She tried to give you a little karate elbow to stop you from cheating. You know how bad your teacher watch over and see you with a cheat sheet there while you try to ease it out of the night. I wasn't done. I wasn't done. Ain't nobody done that. Ain't nobody done that. Jane like that. Ain't nobody do that. But a lot of folks said, though. You know what Jane Lane said, didn't it? I'm going to stab somebody with a pitchfork. That's what folks say. Yeah, a lot of folks said, though. A lot of people said. What did he tell us that at? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I heard 1 Corinthians, actually the apostle. I would have just said probably Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. This 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. Amen. Y'all was just told it last night. Listen. For the love of Christ constraineth us. We just talked about that, didn't it? He's, when, when you actually take on the information about what real love is, a lot of times we, we kind of, when you hear love, people throw out their mouth so much that people say it. People say love and cheat on people. People say love, people kill people. It's a lot of excuses. A man will put a gun in their wife, head a woman, and say, why you do that? Because I love you. 
So love got so many different variables about it, it's scary. You know what I'm saying? It's not really to be taken seriously. But here we find some real attributes of real love. And he tell us how to really show we love. If you love me, what he wants to do? What did John tell about his commandment? They're not grievous. They're not grievous. Now, you know when you find a law to be grievous to you? When you're a transgressor. That's why he said the way of a transgressor is hard. He said my yoke is easy. Don't mean I don't go through things, you don't suffer stuff. But when you're a transgressor, it's a whole lot harder. A lot of y'all sitting here, your life a whole lot harder than what it got to be. You know the sad part is about y'all, I watch y'all. Some of y'all group and do stuff, and y'all stuff be so dumb, and ain't nobody in your group smart enough to say, you know, this is real stupid. This is real dumb what we're doing. Nobody smart enough to just shed it down, cut it down, cut off. This is the first time I ever said it, hadn't it? It is the first time I ever said it. Had to be. Because if I said it before, no doubt it should have been implemented. I should never have to repeat it again. But had to do it anyway. Because in y'all mind, y'all don't see. I tell y'all before, a lot of y'all are dangerous groups together. You hadn't really seen the real detriment of yourself. See, it's dangerous when you could get yourself in a situation. I tell you something, and then you sit here and look at it. Then you keep catching it's a bad situation. Man been telling me, man been telling me, man been telling me. I'm still going wrong, 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 wrong. You are your biggest enemy. Because in your mind, you seeing what you want to see and you hearing what you want to hear. Something wrong. I just couldn't see far nobody. You keep telling me something ain't what I want to do. I just, for the life of me, I couldn't see doing that. I just could not see. Why am I somewhere doing something or being asked to do that I don't want to do? Why? I don't be no where somebody constantly, constantly, constantly getting on me about something I don't need to be doing. That's crazy to me. Either I want to do it, I don't want to do it. I don't see no real reason to do it. I ain't going to do it. Only reason I'm doing I do because I see that as a real call. Like with David, I know the hardness of your heart. You come out to see the battle. But what did David say? Is there not a cause? People got their own opinion. Tom Smith J.B. want to hear himself. That's why he come out. Is it not a cause? Amen. Is it not a reason for us to be him? Amen. What's the alternative? Hmm. Go to hell. Every time you look at the alternative, the alternative when you're not doing and not complying, you don't obey, you going to hell. Where does common sense kick in and say, ain't nothing worth me going to hell? Amen. Ain't nobody worth me going to hell. Not even myself. That's why when the word comes, that word hit y'all, it show you yourself, and y'all so dumb, you still stay the same person. That's scary. That is scary. Even when, when Hebrews told us concerning the law, those people sat in the wilderness for how long? And saw my what? I would agree with them. I swore they weren't getting in. He said, I swore those people weren't getting in. These people went through a cleansing period of 40 days, similar to 40 days, and then we had to sit outside. That's why he wouldn't let them out. That's why he couldn't even get in the kingdom himself, not to those 40 days. That's why when a woman have a boy, how long we keep him out of him? 40 days, you out. 40 days, you out. That's why he left those people out 40 days. He said, I swear they ain't getting in. In Deuteronomy, the first chapter, he said he told me the why. What did y'all remember what he told him to do? Why? He said, you've been in too long. Had the 40 days, now you come on out. You can come on in. You been, he was down here the 40 days. Take your journey. He was down here too long. Had the 40 days to come on home. Well, we had no idea. I actually had no idea. Just what had to be done so we can get in. I actually have no idea. He said, the love of Christ constrained him. When I look and consider a man would do this for me, the love shown and demonstrated should draw me. Listen, what I hear concerning the law is just what it is. What I see what he did gives me the love of the law. Had the law gone any other way, I wouldn't be here. I sit around and look at all these people that sit in these churches today. All How many folks we got rid of the family in second and third marriages? Because they go back to use Moses. They don't realize Moses wasn't set up for what they were doing. Moses was set up for us. That gave us a temporary still execution. You know, to a man in the morning, they say, hey, come tomorrow, you dying. Tomorrow, we killing you. 
Man, all you doing is hoping you petition, tell the family, make call, get to the governor. Somebody, the governor said, hold, hold, hold the execution for tomorrow. Hold on, hold on. We need to try to review some stuff. That give a prison just a little more life, a little more time, a little more time. Maybe that man will change his mind. This man gave us a stale execution when Moses came and gave him that law. We have been all dead men. That's right. We've been like the Philistine when the law came in. The, cover, the Ark of the Covenant came in. Wasn't nothing going right. Folk getting sick, disease. Say, we don't get this thing, and we be all dead men. Man saved us. Man saved us. Let's look at the law. 19th chapter of the book of Leviticus. Wonderful Savior. Amen. 19th chapter of the book of Leviticus. Give me verse 19. Listen. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Come on. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount. That's the 19th chapter of the book of Leviticus. Technical difficulty. Well, you know what? I thought about writing me up a sermon. Come in, preach, and do it. This nigga would have messed it up. 19th chapter of the book of Leviticus, verse 22. Listen. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with a ram of the trespass offering before the Lord for his sin, which he have done, and the sin which he have done shall be forgiven him. Come on. And when ye shall come into the land. When you shall come into the land. And shall have planted all manner of trees for food. Then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. How long? Three years shall it be as uncircumcised unto you. It shall not be eaten of. Y'all hear that? It should not be eaten for three years. Come on. But in the fourth year. What happened? All the fruit thereof shall be Kodesh to praise the Lord with all. Y'all hear that? In the fourth year, all us should be Kodesh to the Lord to praise the Lord. What happened, son? And in the fifth year shall ye eat of the fruit thereof that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. Come on. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. What was that? Oh, we know. Tell me. He, let the Hebrew write Israelite tell them. Oh, oh y'all. Well, who all got faith? Jesse going to hell. You know, round the corner of his head. Who else got a faith? Kerry, turn your head sideways. Going to hell and round the corner of his head. Who else? Round the corner of his head. He told you, you should not round the corners of your head or do what? You shall not round the corners of your head. Or do what? Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. Neither shall you mar the... That's, that's supposed to mean you're supposed to edge and cut your beard up. That's the Hebrew. You don't go in here and edge and cut your... We just turn it You don't mar yours because you don't edge to cut it up. Who else done did that their beard? Mm-hmm. Where you at? Mm-hmm. That's what they're talking about right here. That's what they're talking about. So what you do your beard? You shave it, trim it up right now. You've been marring the corner of your beard. What you did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What you other? Yeah. He been rounding the corners of the earth. All of them just round the corner. That's the, we don't heard it before, ain't we? Yeah. We don't heard it before. Pick up the fifty chapter of the book of Isaiah. Oh. Did the back, didn't you? Oh, your beard. But if you ain't did that, that piece, that piece that. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 50. Give me about verse 4. Listen to the book. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned. That I should know how to speak a word in season. What happened, son? To him that is weary. To him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. And did what? He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Listen. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious. Listen. Neither turned away back. Neither turned away what? Back. Neither did what now? Turned away back. Neither did he turn away what now? Back. Tell me what he did. I gave my back to the smiters. I gave my back to the smiter. What the smiters did? They were hitting him. They were slapping him. What else did you do, son? And my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. What were they doing? They was marring his beard. 
That's marring his beard. That's what they were doing. They was marring his beard. They were snatching and pulling. That's why his face was red. Remember David? Red. He had red cheeks. He had to do that because of the law. We were told not to do it. Listen, what else he told the book of nine, in the nineteenth chapter of the book of uh, in the book of Leviticus? Listen, ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. That's why Paul told you at Second Corinthians, if you would, chapter five, verse fourteen. Finish that up. Listen. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Yeah. Because we thus judge. We thus what? Judge. What word will use instead of judge, brother? Discern. What do we discern, Paul? That if one died for all. That if one died for all. Then we're all dead. They were all dead. They were dead. They were dead. That was the purpose of why you wound up doing the beard. He told you not to do it for the dead. They didn't realize they were pulling their beard. They were doing it because they were dead. They were dead. How we find that? Let's go back to Genesis chapter 2. At verse 18. Wonderful Savior. Amen. This Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. Listen to the book. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But the tree of what? But of the tree of the knowledge. What at verse 17? Give me verse 16. Amen. Listen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Y'all hear what happened? Of every tree of the garden you can freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. Why not? For in the day that thou eatest thereof. What happened? Thou shalt surely die. I was alive, but he was a dead man. He wound up getting an offense to the law. When they were seeing him pulling his beard, they didn't take no razor and start shaving up his beard and edging up his hair. They were plucking his man's hair from his head. They were pulling his man's beard. That's what they were doing for the dead. And those people didn't even realize they were dead. Ezekiel saw her at the 37 chapter book of Ezekiel. Verse 3. Y'all all right? Amen. Well, y'all look like some sad sex. Some of y'all here trying to stay up. I don't know. I went home. I got to bed probably at 3, 30, 4 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Still got up by 9 something to get in here and do my job. Get the service still in the 12 o'clock hour. And y'all folk come here dead during sleep. Slept, fought, and everything when you left him. I'll, I'll just be ashamed of you done, self. If you want to sleep, what you doing? It's your soul. That's what I'm not getting with y'all. What about y'all's soul? Listen. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? He want to know can they, what bones he talking about, living bones? Dead bones. Dead bones. What happened, son? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Listen. And he said unto, again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. Yeah. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. Listen. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. Yeah. And ye shall live. We heard that before, didn't we? What happened? Adam. Adam called breath to enter the breath of life. Listen. And I will lay sinews upon you. I'm going to lay sinews. What is that? Suits? Flesh. Muscle. That's the muscle. Come on. And will bring up flesh upon you. See that? That's going to be the skin. I put muscle on it first, then put the skin. Put the skin and put the muscle on the outside. That kind of how Joshua back built. But that's another story. I don't even know what that means. Come on. And cover you with skin. And cover you with skin. And put breath in you. Come on. And ye shall live. Come on. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yeah. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Come on. And behold, the shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. Yeah. 
And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. Yeah. And the skin covered them above. Yeah. But there was no breath in them. Yeah. Then said he unto me. What did he want him to do? Prophesy unto the wind. So you think it was a literal wind? Come on. Prophesy, son of man. Yeah. And say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath. And breathe upon these slain. Come on. That they may live. Come on. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. Yeah. And they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Yeah. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Son of man? These bones are the whole house of Israel. Son of man? These bones are the whole house of of Israel. So we say here in discern and we judge. What would we say about Israel? They were dead. That's what Paul let us know. He said we thus judge. We discern that if one died for all, then no. all of them were dead. These people were living dead. Y'all sitting here that don't even know you dead too. Let's see what Paul told y'all sister. First Timothy chapter 5. Give me verse 4. Wonderful Savior. Yes, he is. First Timothy chapter 4, chapter 5. Let's start at verse 4. Listen. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. Paul was trying to relieve the synagogues. He was trying to relieve the congregation when he came and he wrote this. Talk about how they entreat the elder. As a what? Father. The elder men is father. The elder women. And the youngest women. And the, and the men. Younger men and brethren. And the city told do it with all purity. They started giving orders on how we should do things. And they came down to giving people and started taking care and providing for them. He said, if they got kids, they got nephews, or, and they got nephews, well, let them first show power. They don't let them take care of their parents. He said, don't come dump that junk on no congregation. They got kids. He said, let them take care of their parents. He said, let them require, they need to pay their parents back. He said, that's not no congregation issue. Let them take care. And he started to go down and talk about, well, I know how the synagogue supposed to be ran. I know how it's supposed to be ran. He said, let them kids take care of their parents. Probably try to relieve it all. They're supposed to get help the way it's needed at. These folks don't want to go along with the Bible. Paul put everything in order. Come on, son, listen. Now she that is a widow indeed. What is a widow indeed, brethren? She don't have a husband and she has no kids. Husband dies, she has no kid. That's a widow indeed. Come on, son. And desolate. And she's without. Trusteth in God. She trusted in God. And continueth in supplication. And she continue in, in earnest prayer. And prayers. And in prayer. Night and day. Night and day. What happened? But she that liveth in pleasure. But she that liveth what? In pleasure. She that liveth in what? Pleasure. Is what? Dead while she liveth. Who do we find that was in pleasure? Who? Who? Eve. Eve. Genesis chapter 3 at verse 1. People desire pleasure, don't they? Genesis 3 and 1. All the person we can go back related to, we got to go back and look at the law. Listen to the book. This is Genesis 3 and 1. Listen. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, yeah. which the Lord God had made. Come on. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Yeah. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of that the tree. That don't sound familiar. Had God said what? Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. That, this don't sound tempting. That's what they came to Jesus with. Is it lawful for a man to put away a wife for every cause? Testing him. She was, he was just testing her. So God said, you can't eat nothing to him. That's not what he said, is it? He said, every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. This tree of knowledge of good and evil, you eat of that, you're going to surely die. But when the serpent called, he did just like the Pharisee. That's why he called them generation of vipers. They didn't even catch it. Amen. He kept calling them vipers. 
He was like, no, you do the same fools to come and ask me something stupid. No, he didn't tell you you can put away for every reason. But that's how they come to y'all. A lot of times y'all will entertain people that come to y'all with foolishness. Y'all will get stuff going. Somebody can't. A lot of that stuff people don't come in with. I don't play that foolishness. They already know they come. I'm going to bat it down and I'm going to kick it. And I'm going to take all my good salt. I'm going to put some brown junk on the, foot, on the bottom of my foot. I ain't going to step in it. I'm going to put my foot in it. Play that done fool. I ain't got time for no done junk. Y'all hear me? This word come to sit down and consider. You find the same behavior right here in Genesis. He walked up and one another. So God said you can't eat of none of these trees in him. What happened? And the woman said unto the serpent. What did she tell him? We may eat of the fruit of the trees of See the that? Garden. Here she go after something she already knew. But see how he got her talking, got her going? So God said, you can't eat none of this. That's not what he said. If that's what you heard, then that's what you heard. Sometimes y'all get caught up because y'all entertain people trying to explain stuff. People get you with explaining stuff to them. That's why some stuff Jesus didn't answer with these people. They came and want to ask Jesus about what authority he was doing when he did. He said, well, I ask you a question. The baptism, was it a John or was it a God? They said, well, let me think about that. They said, we said God, they gonna, then they're going to say he right. If we said John, all the people revere John. We can't tell. Neither tell you about what I thought I'd do what i do. Y'all, I'm telling you, I already know what most of y'all problems are. Y'all be trying to talk and explain stuff to people. People ask you something stupid. You know they ain't the teacher. Why are you even trying to explain it to them? If that's what they heard, that's what you heard. Trying to explain that no idiot. They're going to wind up getting you off. You're going to get tied up just like her. She going to say and explain it to us. And now that ain't what he said. Why am I explaining to you? If you don't know, a parent ain't for you to know. So he didn't tell you. Come on. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it. Come on. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Yeah. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. But what happened? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Come on. And ye shall be as gods. Listen. Knowing good and evil. Y'all hear that? Where that happen at? When they eating, their eyes came open. In the book of Luke. In the book of Luke, when he sat down and he was going over the scripture with them. Y'all don't see no parallel? It came to pass that they sat down and meet. As they were eating, their eyes came open. Wow. Wow. Y'all don't see none of this? Come on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And what happened, son? And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And it was what now? Pleasant to the eyes. And one to do what? A tree to be desired to make one wise. The woman that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. I got dead women in him. I got dead women on the other end of that camera. Got some dead women. Let me tell you something, folks. It's time to reconstruct what we're doing. Really sit down and lay the heart what we got going on. Make sure our purpose is right. When it come down to it at the end of the day, you got to be just in what you're doing. Just in your dealings when you do stuff. Y'all cover up, you lie, you cheat, you steal, you defraud one another. You're going to hell. But it won't be that you hadn't been warned, you hadn't been told. Though. Make sure you've been told, you've been put on notice you're going to hell. It don't make sense for you to go there and not be told before you get there. Let me tell you something, folks. This is a just book come from a just God. And you're only looking for a just people. Amen. At the end of the day, we got to have just weights. Y'all hear me? We got to make sure everything we do got to be right. At the end of the day, folks, that's the only reason we're here to get it right. Amen. You were doing it wrong before you got him. That's Amen. time to do right. Huh? Amen. Don't let the man sit here and hold you to what he told in the book of, in the book of Isaiah. Can a leopard change his stripe? A leopard his spot? Can an Ethiopian his skin? Then you ain't the people that going to change then, are you? We don't want to be holding to that. That's why we got to die. That's why we got to change. We got to make transformations. Do y'all see how important this world is made to come here and be charged? Our law told us not to do it for the dead. But he wound up, it wound up, the offense wound up coming on him. God couldn't kill him without an offense. This man had to come here and bear our iniquity. The people were dead. Why else were they snatching their beard? Huh? Why else were they plucking this man hair from his head? Let me show you something. The ninth chapter of the book of uh, Ezra, 9 and 1. 
other brother, I try to finish up. See if that's 2 Samuel chapter 10, what I want in verse 1. Hold that for me. I had him holding Luke, the ninth chapter. We might go back and finish that up. Maybe I'll close out with Luke 9, 54. This is Ezra 9 and 1. Then y'all hold me 2 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 1. I need to get through it. I need to meet with y'all. Listen to the book. Now when these things were done, the princes came to me saying. The rulers came to me saying. What happened, son? The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land. Come on. Doing according to their abominations. Doing according to their abominations. Even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites. The Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Come on. But they have taken up their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the Kadesh seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Come on. Yea, the, the hand of the princes and the rulers has been chief in this trespass. Listen. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle. Listen what he did. When I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle. And what else happened? And plucked off the hair of my head. And, and where else? And of my beard. I wonder why in the world Ezra would have did that. Why would Ezra have sat here and started plucking the hair of his head and from his beard? What was Ezra doing? He was rounding the corners of his head and he was marring his beard. For what reason? Because they were dead. They were dead. Listen. And sat down a stunny. He sat down astonished. And I, Jeremiah even asked her, and why should thou be as a man astonished? Or as a mighty man that cannot save? What happened, son? How long did you do this? Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel. Listen. Because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. Y'all hear that? Because of the transgression of those so received by the tradition of their fathers. What happened? And I said, astonished until, How long? The, until the evening sacrifice. How long did they keep Jesus up down the cross? Till we got to get ready for the evening sacrifice. Wow. Important for us to know that, huh? When they plucked off his beard, they also plucked his head. They was rounding the corners of his head and his beard because the people were dead. When he said to him, if you look at, this is why they brought Ezra forth, because he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses. Why do you think these people were trembling? When they sit here and watch Ezra say to him, and that man snatching his own hair, he started marring his head. And marring his, rounding his corner of his head and started marring his beard. And he knew the law of Moses? Wonderful Savior. Amen. Second Samuel, chapter 10. Verse 1. Listen to the book. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanun his son reigned in his stead. What happened, son? Then said David, I will shew kindness unto Hanun, the son of Nahash, as his father shewed kindness unto me. So what did he do? And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. Listen. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And what happened? And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, What did Lord, they tell him? Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father? You think that David honor your father? That he hath sent comforters unto thee. That he done sent thee comforters unto you in your morning? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out? That's and to what he it? actually sent them for. David thinks somebody's stupid. He done actually sent them to come and spy the land out to search it out. So what did King Hanan do? Wherefore Hanan took David's servants and did what? And shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks. And sent them away. And what happened? When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Listen what David told them. Tarry at Jericho. When? Until your beards be grown 
and then return. That's why he had to stay down here on two of them 40 days. He couldn't go back up there with no marred beard. Amen. But you already knew this, right? He couldn't go back up there like that. The man was sitting down here on us and we took him and we wound up marking the man. We wound up taking the man's beard. The man came up for salvation. We didn't believe him. The Pharisees decided they didn't believe that man actually came down here and he do what he said he was going to do. They thought he was sitting here to just try to mark and make a fool out of us, spy the land. So what else they were going to do to him? Wonderful Savior. Amen. And he was the son of David. So he already had been told he got to tear here to his beard grow back. Then he can come back. Ninth chapter of the book of Luke. Y'all already knew this stuff. Ninth chapter of the book of Luke. See, that this man had to go through all that for us. He would despise and reject it. Can you imagine that you got to sit outside and wait till your beard grow back? That's why y'all need to stay asleep. You don't need your enemy. You're going to be a firefighter. This book is written for a reason for us, folks. What sort of things are written for a time? Are written for what, brother? That we through patience? Might? This is Luke 9 and about 54. Make it 55. 56 be fine. Come on. Listen. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives. But to do what? To save them. Listen. And they went to another village. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, yeah. a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. That's my members. You'll follow wherever he go, won't you? Mm-hmm. Come on. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Y'all ain't going to follow that far. You ain't stupid. Got to be real stupid to go to that point now. You got to know when you got to say it's extreme. That's what you got to know now you've been led by Tony Smith and you ain't been led by God. Because you done seen cults before on television. Every church you've been a member of been a cult. You're an individual cult. You self-led. Listen. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. That's some of my members of him. Y'all will follow too if you can go do something you got to do first. Let you get your stuff out of the way, then you'll follow. Come on. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. You ain't going to do that. That's your responsibility. How that going to work? Y'all seen somebody come out the grave, bury somebody else, and put them in the grave? What kind of people bury dead people? Who? Who? Living people. But he said, let the who bury there. So you're going to tell me that's why Paul was able to discern that if one died, then... How the dead going to bury the dead? Let the dead bury their dead. Your father, your mother is a sinner. Let those sinners bury each other. It's tight. It get real tight for us. Now, you know how they're going to look to other people now. That's extreme. But see, this is coming down. He's talking to people that's going to follow him. He will let you know if you're going to follow me, that's the mindset you're going to have. Let them have it. He said, the rest of them, let the dead bury their dead. They're dead. Let them bury each other. Hmm? They told him the blind lead the blind. One ditch we know is the grave. They all going to fall in the grave. Let me tell you something. Y'all ain't serious about following no Lord. I just been with y'all. Let's rethink this whole thing. Y'all get back with me another Sabbath.
Because y'all not serious about actually trying to be saved. I know you can't. It get real tight, and it's only going to get tighter for us. That's a lot of stuff we're going to be able to walk away from and let people have. He told them to let the dead bury their dead. That's their mess. That's their junk. It's tight. Can you take it? Amen. Can you stand on it? Amen. All right. Come on. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Come on. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my home in my house. That's some of the problems some of y'all got. That's some of y'all problem y'all got. What's in your home? These folks will divide you, man. It look like God will divine you. God will divine you. His division come in. Well, if you don't obey the word, it's going to be easy to see who follow and who not. You can't let your heart get overcharged with people at the end of the day. Y'all put a lot of effort to try to make and get other people to do. Can't make nobody do. They got to be in their heart. You can't hear it and see it for yourself. Ain't nothing I'm going to do going to make you see it. Ain't no extra side talk. Some of y'all be wondering, can you just call and talk to somebody? Are you, if I bring it in to you, yeah, you want to be a nigga, you can do it. But when the rich man came back and he wanted Father Abraham to let him go and talk to his brethren, so I got five brothers. So he want to go and tell them not to come there. It's hot. What did Father Abraham tell them they had, brother? If they don't hear them, they ain't going to hear me in no phone conversation talking to nobody. That may absolutely, God don't even work like that. He going to let me preach the book and then say, uh-uh, they ain't going to hear the book. You go talk to him. Then he going to make sense of why did I get lead the book? If you got to go talk to him outside the book, then the book ain't set to do what it's supposed to do. It ain't for everybody. Y'all got to start using y'all done here and make sure you get it. Some of y'all sit here, it ain't for you either. Because y'all can't conform yourself or formulate in your mind what you need to do to get it. You got everything going on. You do, And the sad part is, y'all think y'all be hid. Your junk so tacky, it exposes you and show you are a number one hypocrite. And that's bad. Sad part, y'all to know it. Y'all to know it already. Y'all all right? Amen. That's Amen. good. I take enough of your time because I need to talk to these people. Thank you, Lord. Get a lot of hands. Wonderful. Thank you.